on Eric Hillman, uh, aka Cousin Eric, and the Pepper Camp. Uh, today we're going through Brett Bollinger's bass rig. This is his main bass, and uh, we're going to show you what makes it tick in our segment of Pimp My Rig. Got B2, man, one of Brett's two Ampeg bass cabs. All right, so Brett is using Ernie Balls. 105 to 45. These are stainless steel, but we don't necessarily always use stainless steel. So most of the time, actually, when we use hybrids, um, just thought it'd be cool to give these a shot. We have a couple of packs of these left, and there's not any you know shows coming up right now. Just a you know, difference in uh, stainless steel tends to be a little bit brighter. So now this thing is all strung up. Got brand new Ernie Balls. I'm ready to go. That's Brett's. This is actually usually his main. Um, the black one used to be his main, and then this one was a gift from Fender, which is, you know, it's a heck of a company to give you a gift. Uh, so we threw the Seymour Duncan quarter pounders in there, which he uses in all his bases, and uh, now this became the main. Uh, we, we bypassed all the knobs, so he's got not even a master volume. These used to be tones. No, the good thing about it is it's just always live and you just hand it to Brett. Brett, this low, he's ready to go. So now I just need to run some speaker cable to these guys and we're ready to make noise. So Brett can go on here and if I want to switch them out in the middle of the show, I'll just, you know, put them on that guitar. We can have up to four instruments. Uh, what I have now is one and two. Uh, this is not being used, which is what the skull and crossbones is for, for my own memory. 911 is, hey, uh, emergency, something's weird. Uh, there's a bunch of inflatables on stage, something's happening, and I'll throw them on a cable, which we've actually never had to do ever. So let's let's keep it that way. And uh, here we go. I'm going to kick it over to perform on his Kemper. Uh, so Kemper amps, Pepper's been on them since about, man, I want to say 2018, but maybe 2017 is when we finally started going around. Um, very important. Uh, we kept the same amps for the most part. Uh, Kaleo was a big Mesa Boogie guy and still is. We just simply uh, profiled those amps into these rigs. So you're going to hear the familiar sounds that you're used to um, that you would have heard seen Pepper for years, just a different amp. So these amps are really cool. They can capture any of that. His dry bass tone is a little bit fuzzier than most, I would say. Um, it's, it's very sharp because the strings are new. <laughs> Attack controlled. If he really hammers on it, or you know, on certain songs and whatnot, he'll use a pick. Uh, Dunlop picks, awesome custom gauge. Um, man, he uses an 80. They're normally the green. I think they're 88s or something like that. So uh, that might sound familiar to you. If he's playing a you know more punk rock song, it might be something like. He straps off extremely low. Helps with the tone. Uh, that's as bright as we're gonna get. Maybe something like a. Something like that. Uh, that kind of tone. It's got a little growl to it, and actually, I like it a lot. Uh, the amp we are using is an Ampeg B15, classic uh, old school Ampeg combo. You can see it right here. And uh, it, it's ripping, man. It's exactly what we need. And that's our completely dry signal, is that one right there. So. Uh, <laughs> The harder you hit on it, the more life you get out of it. And if you're just kind of, you know, it, it brings it to life. So his energy definitely comes out in this instrument. It's really cool about the rig is uh, you can see him up there working and you can hear it. Uh, on his rig, essentially, if you look at these four colored knobs, think of it as, uh, you know, their own individual pedals, right? You're going to see guitarists have, you know, pedal boards. We kind of just work them into here. This red one adds a little more balls to the already ballsy bass tone. So without blowing you out, once we hit that on. Just a little more scratch to it, you know, just a little more. And when you guys are in the dub and you're really, you know, your love affairs, uh, your use me's, and you're just really dub heavy, bass heavy pepper songs, his old group fluorescent yellow right there and it's one of my favorite ones it's just kind of for me uh, without going too technical and putting it into terms that you can understand easily it just sucks the, tone, the treble out a little bit and gives you a uh, you know low so no matter it's it, you know 
know, attack obviously is going to give it more more volume, but it won't ever get that trebly. So you know, he could spend majority of his show with just this on too, just for that low uh, low section. We'll turn that back off. Um, next in line, he's got the blue switch, which is a chorus. Uh, we kind of copied the MXR stereo chorus. Uh, just a nice, clean, uh, I don't know, how do you explain chorus to someone? It's uh, the way you would explain what it does isn't really what it sounds like to me. So it's just, to me, it's a, you'll hear it. You know, it's fancy. I mean, super. Kind of, I don't know, underwatery. Really close down. He's got a great look, so it's took us a while to, to get that perfect. All these, really, it was a uh, bunch of hoops to jump through. Uh, last, he's got a delay, which is the green switch, and uh, let's do that with my sweet Skechers. Okay, so delay. If you're not a player, delay is just an echo, but delay it just you know it delays your your sound. So. In time. So sometimes you see him up here kind of doing one of these one of these numbers and, and sometimes he can just be filling it in the song. But uh, if you step in on this thing, really what this does will change the time. So if he wants his delay to go three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And time it accordingly, you know, if he wants it faster or slower, whatever. So let's do a uh, infinite number of things you can be doing uh, in the middle of a breakdown or something. For the most part, that is his entire rig. Um, it seems almost like it should be a lot more, but luckily, thanks to these awesome Kemper amps, uh, it's been streamlined. I mean, there's not a whole lot of cables on our stage. If you've ever seen Pepper, we're on a really clean stage, man. They're, they have plenty of room to run around. There's not a bunch of uh, loose cables going everywhere. It's pretty much just two pedal board cables going around the stage and leaving the, the center of the ring to be uh, used like a WWF ring would be. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much like a WWF ring up there, especially <laughs> on Brett's side. So uh, be careful if you're ever near him, you know, if you pay for the meet and greet or something, because you got to watch out where this, this thing could just turn around and whack you. Uh, which I do recommend the experience if you ever get the option, because they're it's a great band to watch. I have a blast watching them from stage, especially. Uh, but for the most part, that's it. It's pretty much straightforward. Bass into switcher, into wireless, out of the wireless, straight into here. And then this, obviously, they take the sound from this. And you know, you can mic the cab if you want, because we have live cabs all the time. From there, it'll go through the, uh, the A into your sweet, sweet ears, into your sweet, sweet record players. And uh, that's how we do his bass tone. That's uh, Brett's rig. Well, uh, thanks for coming to uh, Pimp My Rig, and I uh, hope you stick around for Kaleos, because it's coming up next.